We've seen in this chapter several examples of chaotic two-dimensional dynamical systems, but these could arise in a number of different ways. One way that we're going to look at now is something called a torus map, and this is going to give us some new examples. Recall back when we were in volume one and we looked at the circle S1. There were lots of ways to think about what a circle is. You could think about it as just a literal circle or as the interval, say from zero to one, with the end points identified or as a quotient space, the reals modulo, the integers. And we also looked at circle maps discrete time dynamical systems of the form e theta equals f of theta. Okay, we've got all that. Now, what we're going to do is bump this up to a two-dimensional version of what? Of a circle. This is going to be a torus. Now, what's a torus? You've seen tori before. You probably called them donuts. They are two-dimensional surfaces that sort of wrap around like a circle in one direction and a circle in another direction. Now, mathematically, what a torus is, well, it can, just like a circle, be thought of as a space obtained by gluing or by quotienting. So for a two-dimensional torus, what you can do is take a square and identify the left and the right hand sides and then identify the top and the bottom sides of that square. Kind of like when you're playing an old school video game and you run off the side of the, the screen and you come back on the other side, just like that. Or we can think about a torus as a quotient space where I take the plane R2 and quotient out by the integer lattice within there, z2. What does that mean? Well, it means you're looking at the x-coordinate mod 1 and the y-coordinate mod 1. That's it. That's a simple way to think about a torus. Now, let's think about torus maps, discrete time dynamical systems on a torus, something that is defined by a function f from the torus to itself in whatever form you want. So a simple example that generalizes things that we saw with circle maps is rotations, where this function f takes the two inputs, x and y, either on the plane or thought of as angles, to x plus a constant alpha, mod 1, and y plus a constant beta, mod 1. We're doing both of these mod 1 to respect the fact that we're on a torus. Now, this is really just an uncoupled pair of rotations on circles, one along the x circle, one along the y circle. Now, you remember, back from volume one, circle maps, these are not chaotic. You might have lots of periodic orbits, you might have no periodic orbits, but it's definitely not chaotic. However, there are torus maps that are both chaotic and incredibly simple right down. Here is one of my favorite examples called the 2111 map. This is also often called the Arnold cat map or the simple Anosov map has lots of different names, whatever. The 2111 map is given by f of xy equals the matrix 2111 times xy. This is just a linear transformation, but it is a linear transformation on the torus. It respects the integer sublattice. It works with x and y being mod 1. Now, this has some interesting properties. It is invertible. You can take the inverse of that matrix, right? It is area preserving. Why is it area preserving? Oh, the determinant of that matrix is equal to 1. All right, so those are the obvious properties, but what is not obvious is that this is really a chaotic dynamical system, a very chaotic dynamical system. Let's take a look. I'm going to take a look at the torus unfolded to a square, and I've got some sort of design on that region. Now, this map cannot be deformed to the identity you just do that map and just boom, there it is. But what I'm going to illustrate is what happens when I stretch the plane out with everything repeated mod 1. If I stretch this out according to this map, then everything is sort of sheared. 
And of course, you can see exactly what that linear transformation does to a region, but you need to think about it being sort of uh, all mod one so that this is really giving you a map on a torus. Now that's what happens when we do the map one time. What if we do it again? And then again, and then again, and then again, as we iterate this map forward, we could see that everything is getting stretched out along a certain direction. What direction? Well, look, I mean, you've got the equilibrium at zero, zero, and then you have what kind of equilibrium there? It's a saddle. And what you're seeing is the direction of the unstable manifold. But that unstable eigenspace is really wrapping around at an irrational angle on the plane. That's why you're seeing this crazy stuff. Now, what about the stable eigenspace to the origin? Well, if we undo what we did with that map and its iterates, and then we apply the inverse, then what do we see? We're getting stretched out along that stable eigenspace direction to F. So you can see the direction of stability, the direction of instability in that map and its inverse. Very interesting. Okay then, so this really is a chaotic dynamical system. The periodic orbit set is dense. You have all of those properties, but this is very different than the other types of systems that we have looked at. It has some other fascinating properties as well, including something called structural stability, which means that if you bump this system, if you perturb it, if you look at any nearby mapping, then it's really the same dynamical system. It is topologically conjugate to this. It preserves all the periodic orbits, all the dynamics, everything. That is a little bit beyond what we are prepared to talk about, but it's very cool. So that's the 2111 map, and it's a great example of a chaotic dynamical system on a torus. Now, got to be honest here, we're really just touching the surface of a subject that gets very deep, very quickly. If you go further into this subject, you find that the dynamics of two-dimensional chaotic mappings, it just seems unmanageable. There's so much going on. There's so much stuff. How do we make sense of it? That is what we're going to focus on next.